How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Johnny here again, taking a look at 19.4 stuff, entropy changes, and chemical reactions. So our objectives are as follows. Students will, that's you, qualitatively and quantitatively determine the change in entropy for chemical reactions. So there's this handy-dandy, scary-looking equation that doesn't really mean a whole lot of scary stuff. We'll get into it. All right. Um, big idea number one, patterns and entropy. In terms of entropy, solid is less than liquid, which is less than gas. We've, I think I've said this a million times already. So the gas is the most disordered. It's able to fly around in uh, any direction it wants. It's a gas. Uh, so gas would be the, have the highest entropy. As molar mass increases, entropy increases. So heavier stuff, all things else being kept equal, the heavier it is, the more massive it is, the greater the entropy is as well. So if you're looking at like group two stuff, beryllium is less, has less entropy than magnesium, which has less entropy than calcium because they go in order from, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Here we go. This is going from light things to heavy. So calcium of those three would be the one with the highest entropy. Uh, molar entropies are generally higher for substances that have an increasing number of atoms in its formula. So, for example, if I had CH4, its entropy is going to be less than butane, which has four carbons and 10 hydrogens, as opposed to just one carbon and four hydrogens. And let me explain why that is. So the more atoms, the more degrees of freedom you got. So right here, I just got methane, which is going to be my CH4. And, okay, these things can spin around that's one degree of freedom and they can kind of bend and stuff too which is fine and all but there's really only one way that this can exist in three-dimensional space and it's looking like this whereas if i had butane which is going to be that c4h10 it looks like this carbon chain and now since we have more links in this chain they can bend in different different ways so you can see uh this and this are the same molecule they're just bent in different ways slightly all right so more freedom because you got more atoms on there. Big idea number two, the change in entropy equals the sum of the entropy of all the products minus the sum of the entropy of all the reactants. And this looks scary, but you're gonna be like, oh, this is just like Hess's law. This is stuff that we've done before, but now we're doing it with entropy. So basically you subtract the sum of the entropy of the reactants from the sum of the entropy of the products and you get the change in entropy, the delta S. All right, the values of entropy for different molecules are known and can be looked up on tables. You got your tables, you look it up, you go, what is the entropy of formation or whatever it is for this substance, and you look it up for all the substances, and you just do that. So this is like the delta H problems and using the delta H formation information. Uh, you've done this kind of stuff before, but know that the molar entropies of elements at 298 Kelvin are not zero. You got to look them up. All right, so you got to look up what those entropies are. So... Example problem, determine the delta S naught uh, for the following spontaneous reaction at 298 Kelvin. All right, well, first thing we have to do is look it up, or look up these entropies. So I look them up. I look up the substances, and I am paying attention to the phase, because sometimes you'll have the same substance but different phase, like you'll have H2O liquid or H2O gas, and it's important that you, you look up the right one. So then I looked up the entropies, which are in joule per mole Kelvin, and there they are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bookkeeping. I see that N2 is going to be 191.5. 3H2 is going to be 3 times whatever H2 is, 130.6. And it goes to 2NH3, and each NH3 is going to be 192.5. So now I'm going to do a little math. What is the sum of the reactants, and what is the sum of the products? So I'm going to do this math. I do 3 times that. I get. I wrote it down. 391.8, and this is still 191.5 because there's only one of them. And then 2 times 192.5 gives you 385. So now the products minus the reactants. So I do 385 minus 391.8 and 191.5, which is I like doing this math first, um, 583.2. So then I do 385 minus 583.2, and I get negative 
and my units are going to still be joules per mole Kelvin, right? You've done this before, but now you're doing it for entropy, so don't freak out. But wait, Mr. Tanio, I thought spontaneous reactions were supposed to increase the entropy of the universe. This problem is for a spontaneous reaction, but the entropy decreased. OMG. All right, so remember, you got to look at the entropy of the surroundings. So the surroundings serve as a large heat sink where temperature essentially stays the same. Uh, and any change in entropy of the surroundings will be due to the heat given off or absorbed by the reaction, which is the system. So remember that the delta S of the surroundings has to equal the negative Q of the system divided by T. So Q is determined by the change of heat of the reaction. And I'm going to cheat and just look these up. So you figure that out with the delta HFs, uh, which we've done before. So you look up N2, it's zero. You look up H2, it's three times zero. And then you look up NH3 and you get negative 46.19 kilojoules. You times that by two because there's two moles of it. All right. So then you get delta H of negative 92.38 kilojoules. So delta S of the surroundings is going to equal negative Q of the system divided by T. So you get 92.38 divided by 298 Kelvin because that's the temperature we're working at. And you get 310 joules per Kelvin. And that is your delta S for the surroundings. So if you're talking about the whole universe, well, the delta S or the entropy change of the universe has to equal the change in entropy of the system and the change in entropy of the surroundings. So we combine those two numbers and you get an overall change of 112 joules per Kelvin. Notice that it's a positive value, which tells you that it's a spontaneous reaction, like the problem was saying. And the entropy of the universe increases. And that's, that's it. For real, that's it. That's all it is. That's so all you got to be able to do, all right? Things that you've done for delta H, you got to do it for delta S now, all right? So I hope you found it helpful. See you in class. Bring questions. Goodbye.